It's been a couple of days since Jovko had confessed to him, and soon they would be going back to school, their break slowly coming to an end. But even then their spirits, especially Javkwas, were as high as could be. Thomas was still a bit confused, suddenly having a girlfriend and all, something he thought would never happen. But he was happy seeing Javkwas so happy. As this was his first serious relationship, Thomas wasn't really sure what he was supposed to do, so he just decided to go with the age-old mindset of winging it, and hope for the best. As far as Thomas could tell, no one in Javkwas' family had noticed the change in he or Javkwas' mood, but then again, that may be due to them thinking he and Jovko were together to begin with. He wasn't sure. Mr. Adea definitely thought so, at least jokingly, with his not-so-subtle comedic comments and jibes on the matter. But as far as Thomas could tell, it was just that, jokes. Just a way to make one of his daughters embarrassed. A custom that all dads, no matter the species, time or distance, seemed to share. It was after one of these jokes that they decided to spill the truth. So, Thomas, your first day's ending in a few days. How's it been going so far? Mr. Adair jokingly said, giving him a comically large grin. With a quick glance at Javqua, Thomas gave her a knowing smile before turning back to Mr. Adair. All jokes aside, we actually started a few days ago, Thomas declared, a dumbass grin on his face. Mr. Adair was stunned for a second, his face going blank, processing what he heard. But as the moment passed, a delighted and knowing smile spread across his face, a genuine one. Took you long enough, he cheered, laughing deeply. For the rest of the family, it wasn't so obvious. What are you two on about? I, are you serious? Mrs. Adair asked, confused, as the room went silent, only for it to be broken by the sound of Jaquar doing the crack of equivalent of face palming. Dear, Mr. Adair spoke, as he gently placed his clawed hand over his wife's. Our little girl is finally growing up. Using all of his willpower not to burst out laughing, Thomas waited for Mrs. Adair's response. What? The female Krakovac sputtered, and Thomas, expecting her to be upset, worriedly readied himself for a verbal assault, only to be surprised once again. Finally, it took you too long enough, Mrs. Adair all but screamed, shaking her head. She looked over to her daughter, wiping a prideful tear from her eye. I think it's time we have that important talk, don't you think, Javi, about activities between different species and genders? Mom! Javko groaned as Thomas blushed, trying his best not to laugh. Thomas looked over to Mr. Adair, who smiled knowingly and shook his head. Luckily, the talk isn't my job, he said, as Mrs. Adair jacked Javkor upstairs. Loud arguing heard moments later. Mom, I'm old enough to know this stuff. Please, not now, not after dinner. It's my duty as a mother to make sure you understand this, Javi. When a male and a female, or two females, or two males, or when two people, or multiple people for certain species, like each other very much... She's not very subtle, is she? Thomas said, staring up at the stairs as Javka and Mrs. Adair's voices echoed down. She never was, and that's why I love her, Mr. Adair replied. Javka's siblings just sat there at the dinner table, confused as to what all the fuss was about. Valas was at school a few days early, once again doing stuff for his now most hated person. He had been tasked with going through the information they had on these soon to be new human students. Three to be exact, all different subspecies. Two more in his year, just his luck, and one a year ahead. Okay, so first I need to see which classes they have. Valas walked down the empty halls, no longer filled with the ambient sounds of students and teachers. The emptiness and silence gave Valas a heavy sense of unease, like something had happened to all the students. But pushing the thoughts aside, he continued moving towards the headmaster's main office. Not long after... He found himself standing in front of the intimidatingly large doors, once again forcing him to push away his conflicting thoughts. Slowly pushing the large door open, Valor stepped inside to see the highly decorated room. He thought back to the last time he stood in this exact place, back when he had heard the headmaster ranting about predator species. He hadn't thought much of it back then, but thinking back on it now, it just showed him how naive he was, how much he had glossed over. Valus could have done something right then and there, told other teachers, immediately cut ties with the feather buffoon, but he hadn't. And he sure couldn't now. No. Instead, he had to make up for his past self. Walking towards the table in the middle of the room, he briefly admired its large and ornate nature, before realising it showed a lot of the headmaster's true vain self. He opened the second drawer on the left side, as he had been... instructed. Pulling out a small drive, a piece of technology that hadn't needed much development for well over a couple decades, Valas put it in one of his satchel's pockets. 
Taking one last overarching look at the office, it began to leave at a brisk pace, his footsteps echoing through other halls. Valor swore through the busy streets of Clevin 4, dodging the many pedestrians in his way. His satchel bounced off the chitin of his leg as he moved, and his antennae began twitching to the rhythmic shallow beat. Lost in his thoughts, he nearly walked into a small figure looking around with wonder and amazement in their gold-coloured eyes. Stopping himself just in time, he took a closer look at the strangely familiar-looking tiny being before his breath hitched. In front of him stood what was most definitely a human, but different from Thomas. Their skin was pinker, and the head fur was also different, being an earthly brown instead of the light gold he had become accustomed to. It was also a bit taller. The human looked fascinating. So fascinating, in fact, that he remained standing there instead of running away. Of course they noticed him. The human, turning to him, smiled and gave him a small nod, their strange gold eyes locking onto his own. He daintily returned the gesture and watched as the human smile widened, and they walked by him, wandering into the crowd of average-sized Xenos that towered over him like trees. His mind still stuck in the image of the human. Valus nearly got knocked over by a large group of Kentalis, their loud squeaky voices the only thing alerting him of the infamously oblivious balls of fluff. Their bodies seemed almost round to Valus, but he knew for a fact that that was just attributed to their copious amounts of criminally soft fur. Berating himself and not paying more attention, Valus moved with renewed vigour towards his home. It soon came into view, and he spotted his twenty or so visible siblings through the windows, running around and making a ruckus. He truly felt sorry for his neighbours, soundproofing could only do so much. Once inside, he immediately headed for his room, expertly manoeuvring through the many, many bodies. Closing the door, he finally relaxed, knowing he'd finally have some peace. As he was about to begin going through the information, he heard someone run, seemingly head first into his door. Valor stared at the abused metal barrier for a moment before shaking his head. Little siblings, why can't they be as quiet as they were in their lava stage? Clearing his mind, Valor powered up his hollow computer, once again telling himself he would one day be able to afford an implant, maybe even a high-end one, before plugging in the small drive and booting it up. Three folders opened up automatically, and Valas clicked on the first one he saw. Rylan Rivera. Taking a look at the photo, he recognised the golden-eyed human as the one he had seen earlier on the street. Well, he seemed friendly enough, Valas thought, as even in the photo, the human could be seen with his seemingly trademark smile. For a brief second, he contemplated attempting the gesture, but quickly realised he was biologically incapable, and a depressed sigh breached his mandibles. Valas continued reading, finally getting to Rylan's subspecies, the United Systems of America. Did this subspecies, called American, have multiple subspecies within itself? What? How does that work? Valas thought, before deciding to check back on that bit later. Reading further, Valas found out that the United Systems of America had an affinity with bionics and cybernetics, and judging by some images, they certainly weren't what the Galactic Council considered safe. Because a human isn't a human if it isn't really dangerous, he thought, as his mandibles twitched. Apparently the Americans installed cybernetics and bionics to themselves all the time. Not because they got injured frequently, because they just felt like it. The average age at which an American gets their first body mod is 16. Valor stopped reading for a moment. What? Scrolling back up, he reread the sentence to make sure he hadn't misread it. He hadn't. Humans are certainly something else. Valus thought, as he realised just how badly he needed to make up for his misdeeds. Hopefully he could become friends with Thomas. If nothing else, he was at least going to try. Going back to the photo of Rylan, Valus realised that he was definitely modded, as his eyes were in no way a natural colour for his subspecies. Once again sighing in exasperation at the sheer oddness of humans, Valus decided to move on to the next document. Opening it up, he once again paused. Is that paint? No. No, it... it isn't. This new human subspecies, the Weltram Deutsch, completely shattered his narrow view on what humans looked like. They had grey skin and red eyes, and they were short, much shorter than the Britannians and the Americans. Valor slightly slammed his head against the table in annoyance. Why? Why? What is with this species? Valor shouted, his voice still unheard from all the noise outside his room.